one year after the rescue of the train tigers, Four Paws returns to Argentina to bravely rescue two tigers from an illegal breeding farm in Balcarce, near Buenos Aires. And during a grueling 60-hour journey, Fanjo, aged 18, and the resilient five-year-old Charlie were finally brought to their loving forever home, Almawa for Nature and Wildlife in Jordan. But first, let us go back two weeks in time. We find ourselves in Argentina, where Four Paws animal welfare officer Velizar Angelov is preparing the crates for the two tigers. We received this uh, signal from the local authorities that uh, there is a breeding farm. Uh, they found there uh, two male tigers, one old, one young. Uh, when we see the place where they live, uh, on the pictures, uh, the place is really bad, with uh, small enclosures, really dirty, and actually it's dangerous because it's from some rusty metals. Uh, the best choice for those tigers is to be moved to one of our sanctuaries to have their species appropriate at home with a big area for living. There are small things that need to be changed. Uh, the most important thing is the water. The water will be here because they will need a lot of water during their long trip. So we need to put the bowls for the water, locking mechanism, and some more holes on the back side of the crates. Uh, the situation is delicate because the owner, of course, he doesn't want to let go of the tigers. He wants to keep them. So the, the important thing is to go there. Maybe we will need the police to intervene if the owner doesn't want to give the animals. Uh, so let's see what will happen. The next day, the team prepares the gear for the rescue mission. Okay. We are a few hours before the rescue mission. Time is very, very crucial and important tomorrow for the success. Uh, despite it is a secret mission, we don't announce about it till this moment. We start tomorrow at 6.15, it will be dark here in Argentina. So we have one hour drive to the location where we have to confiscate the two tigers. Uh, I have a time of a frame of time, one and a half hour only. It might be rainy in the morning, this we consider in our plan. We might have a good cooperation with the owner of the animal to facilitate uh, without anesthesia putting the tiger, which will be a great, great step. Not use anesthesia to put the tiger in the crate. Option two, uh, it will be some resistance and uh, due to the situation and the presence of the police and the stakeholder and the Ministry of Environment, we might have to dart the animal. We have to consider also one of the two tigers are really 18 years old. So we have, we are prepared for the medication, the reverse and everything. We are prepared also for the microchipping of the animal. So some emergency medication. The team also is prepared for the longer trip with the food for the tiger and the water. So timing is very, very important and structure and the team structure and really the coordination with the different authorities about the role and the responsibility. This is very important. In the coming hour, we'll have a briefing meeting with the police to speak about all the detail with the stakeholder from the ministry who arrived shortly uh, from Buenos Aires to our place now. So we have a long night in front of us and a very long day, but we are very focused and we should focus on the rescue mission. We are very excited. It is a unique mission, but we have a great team here and uh, I'm looking forward. After months of preparation, the time has finally come to pick up and rescue the two tigers from the illegal breeding farm in the Buenos Aires province of Argentina. The tigers are kept in inappropriate keeping conditions and seem to have been severely neglected. For the moment everything is fine. We will first try to put the tiger inside the crate without anesthesia, but just in case this is not working, we are ready with the dark. 18-year-old Fanjo is led into the crate by his former owner, 
who has fortunately decided to cooperate throughout the rescue. The first time it's smooth, sure we are all excited, but I think the Tiger was very good cooperative, the team was well prepared, and one is done. The Four Paws veterinary experts then proceed to anesthetize five-year-old Charlie. ¿Hace cuánto tiempo que lo tiene, Mohamed? Cinco años. Me sentaba a tomar mate, se subía para arriba las patas y se acostaba a dormir acá arriba. Ahí. Eh, parecía un, así, flaco. Y yo, este se muere cuando me trajo, me trajo una caja. Y empezó a tomar, a tomar, al mes, oh, un lomo así, así, ya. Now we have animal under control. He is in a good health condition currently. So we will put him now in the crate and I will give the reverse for the medicine. And after this, we will move. So thank you again and let us go. First step in this difficult mission is really done. Um, I think on behalf of both of to thank everyone who worked hard in the last days with us here, from the Ministry of Environment, from the police brigade. So we, we give them microchip, we give uh, some medication and at the end we give the reversal for the tiger. He's time to wake up now and we are on our way back to Buenos Aires. We still have a long trip about between five to six hours with two stops to check on the tigers and another long trip till Jordan with a stop in Istanbul. After a long 60 hour journey, the big cats arrive at Queen Alia International Airport in Jordan. It was a long journey for the team, yes, and it was a long journey for the Tigers as well. We just want to, to check how they are, how was the flight for them. Especially the first flight was quite long from Buenos Aires to Istanbul, and then from Istanbul to Amman, it's a short flight. So after two days, the Tigers look really great. I mean, after this very heavy and exhausting trip, they are relaxed, but they were thirsty. You know, they are really thirsty, complaining. But this is a very good sign. So now it's another one hour drive, and finally, they will touch the ground again. It's 4.30 a.m. The Tigers arrive at Al Mawa. Now, they wait to be released into their night rooms. Charlie, named after Argentinian musician Charlie Garcia, goes first. Initially cautious, the tiger suddenly bursts out of his crate and sprints off. Finally, it's time for the older tiger, Fanjo named after race driver Juan Manuel Fanjo, to be released from his crate. The old one, he's really calm and peaceful, but uh, he was circus animal and he's used to people and he suffered a lot. He was happy here, he started eating right away, even from the hand, uh, drink water, little bit of course, and secured because new place, new smells. But first, the tigers need to get used to the electric, electric fences because it's something new for them. And even this small for us enclosure, it's quite big for them. So they need to adapt step by step to the place. So then we can release them in a big final enclosure. To ensure proper care, a timely medical check is crucial. However, due to the rescue's urgency, it was impossible to conduct a veterinary check on the tigers in Argentina. Therefore, 
The Four Paws team meets up a few days after the rescue to perform a medical check on both big cats. Four Paws' Chief Executive Officer Josef Fabigan and Chief Development Officer Luciana D'Abramo join the vet check as well. Very important to have these kind of sanctuaries as a tool for our global advocacy. And especially in this area, uh, it, uh, the government is very engaged in taking animals uh, which are smuggled and, and we support the government here and we support the, the work of Four Paws by bringing animals here which we rescue from suffering elsewhere. The team starts with Charlie. After being sedated, Charlie is brought to the clinic for further examination. in our sanctuaries, in our standards, uh, we don't want them to reproduce. So now, unfortunately for him, he's going to get neutral today. Then we re release him back into uh, his enclosure. Aside from castration, Charlie requires additional treatment and a modified diet for kidney and liver abnormalities, likely caused by early separation from his mother and improper care and feeding. Now it is time for Fanjo's vet check. Uh, the general health condition, the general body condition. We did a uh, proper ultrasound to visualize the kidneys, the liver, the stomach, the internal organs. We took blood, going to be sent into the laboratory to have some ideas what's going on. He has to receive a dental treatment in the future. So the, the canine, they're broken off and the root canal is open. It's always a, a risk uh, for infection. And uh, he's not castrated, but he is declawed in both in front legs, so uh, totally uh, removed all the claws. And the hind legs, the claws are still there. In general, he is not in a really good condition, but the organs are healthy, so he, he will recover very soon here, I guess. And um, then we make a plan for the future when he is a little bit habituated here and, and recovers a little bit, then we might uh, do some dental work. After Fanjo has recovered from the vet check the following day, he is released into his bigger, temporary enclosure. Funky and Charlie are just two tigers amongst more than 200 big cats that we estimate that are still living in suboptimal conditions in Argentina. We have done the research and the work. Today, there's no place within the country that can offer solutions that are up to the standards that these animals deserve. And that's why we have offered our help for the government of Argentina, the Ministry of Environment and Sustainability, to cooperate, to bring FOPO's technical expertise and support to find the right sustainable solutions in the country so that we can ensure that we put a definite end for wild animals and especially big cats being held under the wrong conditions and being mistreated in Argentina and starting from there looking into other options of continuing providing our expertise to improve and change things sustainably in the whole of Latin America. When both tigers are ready and stable enough, they will move to a 5,000 square meter large enclosure built specifically for them to spend a peaceful life in their loving forever home. <laughs>